All right, welcome back to Program Logic and Design. We're going to be discussing the three basic structures. Remember, we don't want our code to be all tangled up. We don't want flow lines crossing each other. That is where spaghetti comes in mind. So we don't want spaghetti code. So we want structured programming. Remember, spaghetti code is our unstructured programs. So let's see. Structure is your basic units of programming logic. You get three types. You get your sequence structure, which performs actions in order. Doom, 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 straight underneath each other. There's no branching or skipping any tasks. Then you get your selection structures, which is your decision structures. Remember your decision symbols, which is your diamond shape. And you ask a question, and then you're going to take one of two actions, a yes or a no. You get your dual alternative ifs or your single alternative ifs, which we're going to be discussing later on. Then you get your loop structure. You repeat actions while a condition remains true. So we'll discuss the loop structure in momentarily now as well. Now the mathematicians in the mid-1960s proved that any program, no matter how complicated, can be constructed using one of more of these three types of structures, our sequence, our selection, and our loop. Now these three structures alone you can diagram any task from doubling a number to performing a brain surgery just from these three. So I'm going to explain the sequences in the next slide. This is your sequence structure. It's doom, 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 right on top of each other. You'll see we're stacking a box on top of the box on top of the box. So sequence structures performs actions in order. See, there's no branching and no skipping. It's just dum 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 dum, and they continue step by step until the sequence ends, like driving directions. You go down this road, then you turn right, then you turn left, then you turn right again. And on your left hand side, if you look, there is the house. It's number so and so. All right. So I've added this sequence structure to your template in your PowerPoint for you to use later on. Then we get our dual alternative ifs. These are our selections. Now, our dual alternative ifs contain two alternatives. So either one, yes, or either no. Dual alternative ifs or selections is our if-then-else structure. So if some condition is true, like if traffic is backed up on Cape Road, if that is true, then we're going to do one process. So we're going to continue one block on Heard Street, then turn right on Fifth Avenue. Else, we're going to do another process. Else, we're going to turn right on Cape Road. And then whenever we open an if, we always close the if. Okay, so this is our if-then-else structure. This is how our dual alternative if-then-else structure looks like. We have if yes, we do this. If no, we do this. If yes, we're going to turn down Cape Road and turn left into Heard Street. If it's not too much backed up, then we're going to turn right. If it's not backed up on Cape Road. Okay, so those are our two alternatives. So with a selection structure, which is our diamond shape, you've got to ask a question and take one of two actions. So that's our dual alternatives. So a flow chart that describes a selection structure must begin with a decision symbol. And the branches, which is these flow lines, the branches of decision join at the bottom of the structure. So our flow lines join at the bottom. Remember, it's got to happen in sequence. So this is one structure. So think of this selection structure. We're popping in this big old box, and that's going to happen first. And then it's going to move on to our next box, which might have a loop in or another sequence. So our selection structures must ask a question that can be answered only with a yes or a no. So they both have an alternative to them to do. Our single alternative ifs, it looks like this. You've got yes and you will just have one alternative to do. This would be like if employee belongs to a dental plan, then deduct $40 from employee gross pay. An else clause is not required because there's only going to be one alternative, one thing that needs to happen. So your pseudocode will be if it is raining, then take an umbrella. End if. Done. That's it. So a null case, on the other hand, or a null branch situation, if it is not raining, then an umbrella does not need to be taken. So the case 
basically a null case is when a situation where nothing is done so we don't need to take an umbrella so that will be a null case so a flow chart that describes a selection structure with a single alternative must begin with a decision symbol like a dual alternative and the branches of decision join at the bottom of the structure so the selection structure must ask a question that can be answered only with a yes or a no no will basically just take you carry you'll just carry on with the program so that nothing will have actually really happen but if it's yes if that question which is in our decision here is answered yes then you're gonna have to do something because it says we're gonna have to process something something needs to be done so that will be our single alternative our loop structure our third basic structure is a loop loop structure is repeats a set of actions while the condition remains true you've seen that sometimes we need to repeat something to happen make it happen over and over and over and over and over again so instead of having 10 million lines of code it's repeating the same lines over and over and over and over again we put it in a loop body now the loop body the action or actions that occur within the loop is going to go here in our loop body now the loop structures provide the ability to perform repetitive processing on a very large scale. Looping is often referred to as repetition or iteration. So if you get that in your test or exam, what is a loop structure? It's repetition or iteration. Pseudocode uses while do or while loop. All right, we'll chat shortly about these two loops later, but a condition is tested first in the most common form of the loop which is our while loop so for our loop structure here we will enter our loop our decision this will be our condition which is first tested this is our condition here which needs to be tested and if the condition is true or in other words yes it is true yes they it nobody's entered in Z Z Z Z to en exit the program if we are asking for a whole lot of people's names to be entered in then we're going to do some processing and then we're going to loop back to the beginning of the decision so we can carry on and loop back to the beginning and carry on and back carry on and carry on and carry on until this decision here equates to false so it will be no as the answer and then we carry on with the program so this is in another set of boxes now the reason why I'm saying sets of boxes is I want you to think everything in a box because we're going to stack them just now always begin the decision symbol that has the branches that returns to the prior spot to the decision so always to the prior spot very important you execute the loop body over and over again while the condition is still true only executing the loop when the decision is false so we have our while test condition continues to be true then do some process so you start with a while and you end with an end structure statement end while so while you continue to be hungry take another bite of food determine if you're still hungry end while while test condition continues to be true we're going to be doing something as I said before is that we need to stack things so all logic problems can be solved using only sequence selection and loop in an, an infinite number of ways so that's where we get to our stacking structure we attach structures end to end we put a box down and we put another box on top we we stack 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 or stack to the side etc so it's very important that structures may only be stacked end to end sometimes students commonly make the mistake of interweaving structures instead of actually stacking them but as you can see you can't with our contents of our box if you have a look at our contents of our box here you can't interweave things going in here this is one action this is one structure you can't interweave now a sequence in here because this is one action it's got to first end for in order for us to stack it on top of or put something a sequence in there End structure statements indicates the end of a structure that is your end if statement ends an if then else structure and the end while statement ends a loop structure or 
If you open up an F, you close the F. If you open up a while, you close the while. Very important. Figure 3.6 is a structured flowchart and pseudocode with three stacked structures. Can you find st the structures? Yes, we've got our sequence, we've got our selection, and we've got our loop. Remember I said that it can be stacked in an infinite number of ways. So we could have loop first, and then sequence, and then selection, or selection first, then sequence, and then loop. It doesn't really matter where it goes as long as, long as it is stacked on top of each other and not lines not crossing each other very important please note that the yes and no or true and false is in either flowchart or pseudocode but in this course i want you guys to have yes and no reserved only for flowcharts and true and false only for pseudocode okay we've learned now about stacking our structures now i want to show you that you can actually nest your structures now any individual task or step in a structure can be replaced by a structure. So we call it nesting structures, placing one structure within another. So we indent the nested structure statements. And then we get a block, which is a group of statements that execute as a single unit. So some languages have block delineation symbols. For example, Java and C++ use curly braces to identify blocks. Here's an example of a nested structure. So we've got our condition here, our decision structure, and within our decision structure, we have a sequence. So we're nesting our sequence within our selection. So step J, K, and L constitute as a block, which is a group of statements that execute as one single unit. Now with regard to the end structure statements, how do these statements help to outline a block of code that involves a structure. All we need to basically do is place J, K and L. You are nesting the structures. In other words, you are indenting pseudocode. So as you can see, if condition H is true, then we indent our pseudocode. Step J, step K, step L, all in our if statement. Here's another example is that any sequence or selection loop can be contained in other sequences, selections, and loops. So as you can see here, we've got our step J, which is our sequence. And from our sequence, we go into a loop, which is in a while loop. And from our while loop, we go back into the rest of our sequence. So we would have had like a sequence here. We've just replaced this sequence in the middle here. We've replaced it with a loop now. So step N is now within a loop there. This is our a single selection decision because we either have no or yes. Now notice if and end if are vertically aligned. So they're on the same level. Can you notice any other alignments? Yeah, step J and step L are aligned and while and end while are aligned. So they're all vertically aligned. So structures nested cannot overlap. Example, end well comes before end if. So it's nested within there. So end well is with, within the if structure. Here's another example with for a selection within a loop, within a sequence, within a selection. So we have a decision, we have a sequence, and within the sequence is a loop, the decision within the loop. There is no limit to the number of levels you can create when you nest and stack structures. If you have a look at step N here, step N has been replaced with a selection. To make the logic more complicated, structures that performs step P and step Q based on the outcome of the condition. And this is basically a nested within the loop controlled by condition M. So please note, this is a generic structure for generic conditions like condition M, which can stand for anything we will apply to this to real life programs. The summary is on page 94. It's very important to know as well as figure 3.11. You've got your sequences, your selection and your loop. Structure programs have the following characteristics, include only combinations of three basic structures, which we've discussed as your sequences, your selections, and your loop. 
you each structure has a single entry point and a single exit point. Single entry, single exit. Single entry, single exit. Single entry, single exit. And the exit handles is where you can physically pick up any of these three structures or replace this section here with a structure or replace this section here with a structure or this section here with a structure, etc. These are all spots you can actually connect one structure to another. So the entry and exit is where you can connect one structure to another. Structures can be stacked or connected to one another only at their entry and exit points as we've discussed and any structure can be nested within another structure. Please join me in the next video in which I'll be discussing priming input to structure a program.